All right, and we are going to go ahead and get started. Welcome again, as I said, everybody, to the DAP Pro Show. Um, my name is Aaron White. I am the Community Events Manager for WalkMe. Um, and uh, again, I'm just glad to have everybody here today. This is going to be an interactive session. So uh, as you're joining, just get familiar with that chat, get familiar with the Q&A section of your Zoom controls. We'll be talking a lot about that today. Um, and uh, our, our theme today at the, the December DAP Pro Show, uh, as always, is meet the experts. Our objective here is to showcase innovative examples of digital adoption in action. And make sure you walk away with inspiration and strategies that you can put into practice today. Uh, so some quick housekeeping notes before we get started. This is being recorded today. You will receive a link to that recording via email within a day or two of the event, and it will also be posted in the Walk Me World community. Even though you're muted, again, we are encouraging lots of interaction. So keep the conversation going in the chat. Uh, lots of emoji reactions are also highly encouraged. Um, and then questions. Please feel free to submit questions at any time throughout the event. Um, we will uh, may occasionally be able to take those as they come, but there is time reserved at the end for Q&A. Uh, just use the Q&A button on your Zoom controls to make sure that those questions stay separate from the rest of the chat and make it easier for our panelists to see them. Those. Okay, so today we are talking about data strategy in practice, shifting from output to outcomes. And our presenters today are going to be discussing how they use data to make informed decisions about their digital adoption strategies, how this helps them be more proactive instead of reactive, and how their organizations realize even greater value from their digital adoption investment as a result. If this is your first time attending, our agenda is split into three parts. First, our presenters will have a few minutes apiece to share their stories and present their solutions. Then we'll bring everybody back together for a deeper dive via a moderated panel discussion. And finally, we'll open things up to your questions. Without further ado, we have two amazing guests today. Uh, Alexa Cordell is a digital learning manager at EDF Renewables and one of WalkMe's 2022 Top 100 Digital Adoption Professionals. And Antonio Witherspoon is a Senior Business Performance Manager at Johnson Controls. Uh, both of them have amazing insights for you today, so we're, we'll go ahead and get started. First up, I'd like to welcome Alexa Cordell. Welcome, Alexa. Thank the floor you. Is yours. You're Thank welcome. You, Aaron. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So if I could get maybe some thumbs up or some emojis whenever you can see this, that would be wonderful. Looks great. All right. Okay. So, hi guys. Uh, my name is Alexa Cordell, as Aaron said, and I'm the digital learning manager for EDF Renewables North America. And before we jump into all of this content, I really just want to share my gratitude and appreciation for Lacey, Aaron, and Andrew for putting this on and really cultivating a community and a space where we can get together and share all of these great tools and experiences with each other. Um, I think it's really unique to this DAP community. And I'm also really looking forward to learning from what Antonio is gonna be sharing up next after me. So I'll be focusing on some real tools and templates that can help you show value each step of the way at each point um, in your DAP journey using data and insights. All right, so where do I do my DAP work? I get to share all of this with EDF Renewables North America, and I'm excited. I've been here for 10 years now, and so I just had my 10-year anniversary, and it's an incredible place to be. Um, we are part of a larger EDF group based in Paris, France, and I'm calling in today from our headquarters in San Diego, California, but I am based in Texas. And our offices for the company that I work for are all over North America. We have wind farms, solar farms, offshore wind projects and development, and electrical vehicle and battery storage solutions. We are committed to innovation for future generations, and that's something that we should all really aspire for. I sit within the HR group led by Tina Chen, and I head up our digital learning team. I am privileged to work with a lot of great people, and one of those the group may know online is the Joe Bussey, uh, who we know by uh, Joe Query, and that's someone that I get to learn from every day, and I really enjoy working with Joe. All right, so if you could take some time to just check out the details that are on this slide, I won't work through all of them, um, but EDF Renewables is a really great place. Again, like I said, we're doing really good work. And in relation to DAP, 
we have a lot of internal customers ranging from executives, digital professionals, the communications team, field technicians, and everything in between. So we have a really incredible, um, just diverse workforce, and that's a fun challenge to tackle with DAP. And what works for a field technician may not work for or be appreciated by an IT professional, and maybe what works for a land developer, um, they really have different needs than a software developer and vice versa. So we're always innovating and working on new, um, just great projects. So over the past 35-ish years, we have supported many companies with their sustainability goals and portfolios. And I'm sure you recognize some of those on the screen, some brands and logos here. Um, some of these utilize our off offerings and then some invest in some of our projects. All right, so what do I wanna get into um, really in the meat of this presentation? Um, we're gonna look at the beginning the during and the after. And I'll talk about what each of those mean whenever we get into them. But we're going to want to always be showing value like each step of the way, okay? So that's really the theme here, always showing value, whether it's at the beginning of a project, during it, or after it. So the beginning, how do we do this? Um, what is a tool that I really recommend? Let's start here. Let's consider calculating a value for your DAP project that shows how much it could cost if we don't move forward. So again, if we do not move forward with a DAP project or we delay the time that we're going to start it, what is that going to cost us? Um, this is way, this is what starts a really compelling story that will help you support, get support and gain buy-in. So let's look closer at that. Okay, so by calculating cost of delay, we can put a dollar value on time. Is it time wasted or is it time that we are going to be putting in the work to develop and implement um, a, a great digital or, or DAP solution? We're able to be truly proactive in value realization versus only capturing value reactively after the fact. If you wanna take it one step further, you can take your cost of delay and divide it by duration, which is gonna give you a CD3 score. That can be used to compare to other projects, 3D, CD3 scores, um, and then you'll be able to prioritize scores high to low. However, if you aren't doing that across all projects, let's not worry about CD3 score, okay? Um, ROI, return on investment. This is usually the hot formula to calculate, but by doing cost of delay first and acting on it, you will actually be able to recognize an increased or an improved ROI. And wh why do we think that? So less delay, more chance for return, more fun, more value, okay? All right, so what type of tool can you use to calculate this? This is a template made up of formulas that you can easily calculate or search online. Nothing here is a secret. Uh, I love this standardized template to keep all of our project projections and assumptions in one place. So we're gonna share a blank version of this for each of you to use as you work through it and just go ahead and add your thoughtful inputs and this will calculate your cost of delay for you, okay? So what was I focused on at the beginning uh, of a DAP project whenever we first implemented WalkMe? I was really working on a desktop application, SAP ECC6 desktop for our field technicians to create service orders. And this is a really high touch process and there's a lot of place for error. Okay, not just error in data input, but there error in process adherence. Okay, so WalkMe was a really great solution for real-time guidance, um, guidance and guardrails. All right, when you're able to look at just one process or solution and realize the potential cost of delay, um, let's just say twenty thousand a week. That is a really compelling story, and that will start building your buy-in to move a project along and get your leadership buy-in and support that you really need. Um, this is a great tool. This is a great template. Use it. Make it your own. Okay, so we've talked about the beginning. Let's talk about the during. So how do we show value during our DAP projects? We need to celebrate the journey while we're on it. All right, not just at the end. This will support your continued success. And if you lose momentum, your project, your work is irrelevant. 
all right? So we don't want to lose momentum. So what do we like to do? We love Mira. We love anything that's interactive where we can um, really connect with our users and, and our audience. This is a screenshot of a template from a Miro board that we like to use. And we love the interactivity that this provides. And we do DAP showcases periodically, usually once a quarter, and anyone is welcome. And we celebrate the things that we've accomplished or developed, the awesome stakeholders and the cross-functional teams that we work with. And then we'll talk about what's coming next. And we share this ahead of time so that people can come in, they can add sticky notes or questions, emojis, um, whatever they feel like adding, and we can really connect with that audience. This is also a great place for other teams to see what our digital learning group is doing and get ideas from others. So a little bit of marketing and idea, idea sharing will create more hunger, and that means more requests. If you aren't doing a DAP showcase or something similar, you really need to, okay? Showing value during your work is going to give you leverage to continue all of the fun work. All right, so what do I mean by after? Um, this is really not at the end. Uh, we don't want there to be an end. We want to continue evolving and progressing. Um, but we want to realize value at the end of a period or at the end of um, a, a potential project, okay? We always want to be re realizing that value. So how do I do this? I have a method that's based on data from insights and I compare it to a conservative time allotment. Then I multiply it by a weighted average of employee cost per hour. And my tips for this is to really find a model that works for you and stick with it because over time that consistency is really going to serve you much more than if you bounce around between different models. Always lean, lean conservatively in these calculations and you're gonna find that it is still a really impressive number. Also, uh, if you can't explain your model simply to the stakeholders who are asking, how did you show that value? How, how are you realizing that particular number on my application or my product? If you can't explain that simply, you probably don't know it well enough. So I wanna encourage you guys to get in, lean into your models, learn them and adjust them and really use them. All right, so this is the tool and the model that I like. And again, we're gonna share a blank version of this for you. All of the numbers that you'll see uh, plugged in here are just made up numbers. They're values for this presentation. So you'll be able to input your own um, weighted internal rate and your own different time allotment values. Um, but let me walk through this with the color coding um, that matches on that formula. So each walk me content type as a time value associated with it. And these time values mean the time it might take for someone to perform this task or get this information without a DAP solution being involved at any level, okay? So let's, let's use shuttle clicks for this example, all right? So if you didn't have a shuttle in a specific location, it might take someone two minutes to get to that location, um, minimum. Okay, if they have to go back and forth, find the email or an interest, internet site somewhere, it might take them two minutes, maybe up to five minutes. Okay, so you'll notice we have these two uh, time allotments entered here. All right. Now, for this app, XYZ, again, this is all made up information. I have worked with SMEs to find out that it takes about four minutes, actually. So that's where we get our base case. All right based on some time studies, working with the SMEs again. And then I find my differential, which is gonna be four minus the average of that two and five, okay? So we have 3.5 and my differential is gonna be 0.5. So my base case minus my average, and that's our differential. So we've got that in orange in our formula. Then we grab interactions from our insights data that you can find on your app overview page and calculate that. Um, Calculate your burden rate next, which is going to be your weighted internal rate divided by 60, because we're working in minutes, not hours, and 60 minutes in one hour, okay? Then multiply those three pieces of information, and voila, that is the value for that period of time in a very conservative fashion, 
and then you repeat for each content type and aggregate your total, okay? So we'll be sharing this template again. Keep in mind, again, this is all just um, plugged in fake, fake data, fake numbers here, but the formulas will work for you, okay? All right, I think I've, I've hit my seven minute mark uh, maybe a few minutes ago, but I'm so happy to have been asked to share all of this with you. And I really look forward to any questions or comments that the group may have. And if you wanna reach out to me, please reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. And thank you so much for having me. I look forward to our Q&A and to Antonio. Amazing. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you. Uh, let's see some emoji clapping and whatever other emojis you'd love to share with Alexa. Um, as for those resources, yes, we will share as much as we can in the uh, show notes for this event when it's on demand on the community. So be sure to come back and check out those. Um, but for now, next up, I'd love to introduce Antonio Witherspoon again, Senior Business Performance Manager at Johnson Controls. Welcome, Antonio. Oh, thank you, Aaron. It's, uh, I'll share my screen. And so really, if you can let me know once you actually see it, I'm up and running. Looks good. Excellent. So good day, everyone. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, my name is Antonio Witherspoon. I'm a senior business performance manager for Johnson Controls. Uh, we are a global, global diversified technology and multi-industry company uh, serving a wide clientele, a very diverse clientele all over the globe. Uh, we provide a range of services for building management sales systems with the goal of helping to make buildings smarter, safer, more efficient and sustainable, uh, helping to reduce emissions with building emissions, make a better positive impact on, on the environment and the world as a whole. Um, I'd first like to say I'm very incredibly honored and thankful that the WalkMe team invited me to even come speak here um, regarding our WalkMe journey. And that's really what my conversation will be about um, is the WalkMe journey from understanding the importance of data. Um, the first time I saw a WalkMe demonstration, um, it was kind of like seeing a new iPhone. All the thing I could think was, wow, that's a really cool, innovative software tool. You know, the technology was so impressive to me that I was excited to talk to anyone and everyone within the organization um, and tell more people about how, how they could use WalkMe. Um, so everyone automatically knows, of course, right? You know, if you're using an innovative technology, that automatically makes you a technologically innovative company. I think it does. At least that was my understanding. So here's the one pager that I would use when I'd introduce WalkMe to my peers within the company that may not be familiar with it. I'd walk them through how it's a digital adoption platform. You know, I compare it to like a paperclip, software paperclip that sits right on top of another software. Um, that overlay technology where we can leverage those capabilities to help you know accomplish company goals and impact the company strategy. Um, and I'm a little ashamed to say, although I've grown. I may have been the Oprah Winfrey of Walk Me within my company. It really was, you get a Walk Me. You get a Walk Me, you get a Walk Me. Everybody gets a Walk Me. If you have an interest in a Walk Me, you're getting one. If you're thinking about a Walk Me, we're gonna give you one. So I was very Walk Me happy, right? Um, but I had a great wake up call when I was talking to one of my Walk Me contacts, Elena, at the time, such a wonderful person. And she said, Antonio, I wanna talk about how we can prove the value of Walk Me you know, that we're getting that return on investment. And my response was, oops, I hadn't considered that. How do we demonstrate the value of WalkMe that it provides to the organization? And I felt bad as a program manager that that, that had crossed over my mind at the time. So we ought to just think about what do we need to actually prove the value? So I leaned back on that program management experience. We're starting to think about four key things we wanted to identify you know, to help prove that value. And the first of those is governance. If you think about governance, how it influences an organization's objectives um, that are set, how they achieve it, how you monitor and identify risk, risk responses, optimizing performance, the same thought process can be used, you know, when you're actually putting something in place for a walk me. You know, we needed a clear strategy that consisted of the how the walk me ideas would even be submitted to us. You know, they came ad hoc and we had no processing. We needed gatekeepers at the door, you know, professional stakeholders within the company that could actually decide whether WalkMe was the best use case to try to solve certain solutions. You know, and we wanted to keep stakeholders involved. You know, we've got to go through that stakeholder process to identify 
everyone that the walk me would touch, everyone that had a vested interest in it, so we can maintain their confidence and get their support throughout the process. And documentation was another big thing. We currently use Smartsheet, which is similar to Excel, it's more of a project management tool, but we can keep a number of people involved in the process at the time. And also risk management, being able to identify those risks um, and those risk responses as well. So we needed to put a strategy together for governance of how we're gonna govern, how we're gonna utilize WalkMe to make sure that it's the best application to solve any issues or address any problems that came into play. Next from that perspective, we looked at the user experience. This was key to me, the user experience is a priority. Um, if you ever heard of Donald Norman, he's kind of considered the father of U UI, UX design. Um, and he made a statement here for good designs, also an active communication between the designer and the user. They should be seamlessly by the appearance of the device itself. It must explain itself. So you have to put yourself in your user's shoes and their perspective to make sure that, you know, it just works, as Steve Jobs used to say. And you know, there's sort of four key fundamental things that we focus on, and these by far are not all of them. Um, you can get five or seven key fundamentals of UX design, but the first one is, is it useful? Does it have a purpose? You have to ask yourself, does it have a purpose for the user that it's intended for? Does it have a purpose for the organization? Is it usable? Does it enable users to effectively and efficiently achieve the, the intended outcome? Is it credible? Now this really ties into trust. And you know, it's a big thing about piloting as well, piloting things that you wanna push out to your organization. You can't always get trust back once you lose it. You know, will the intended solution do what it's supposed to do? Because otherwise people are just gonna turn a blind eye and say, oh, it's just that thing again that never works. You know, you start to lose that credibility with it. And also value, not just valuable to the organization, that's something you wanna to touch on, but you also make sure that it brings value, a value proposition to the user as well. How are you making their lives better? How are you impacting their lives to motivate them to use this service? So the user experience always stays front of mind with every walk me iteration that we put in place. How is the user gonna to respond to this? Because they're the target audience. They're the ones who are gonna be using it. It belongs to them. Make sure you put yourself in their mindset and you pilot everything with the intended target audience. Next that was very key to us was the, the problem solving process. You know, as I talked about me being the Oprah Winfrey of WalkMe, people would see WalkMe, they would agree that it was a cool thing that they wanted to utilize it for this segment of their business. But we never really talked about that problem and objective. You know, we needed to clearly state the problem that we wanted to be solved. And more importantly, we needed to be able to quantify what that problem looked like. You know, what was the, the, the opportunity cost if we couldn't put the WalkMe in place? So how can we measure once we put the WalkMe in place, optimally, what do we want it to look like? So really understanding in concrete information, what's your present state, and what's your optimal future state? And from that standpoint, start to gather information, you know, understanding what that opportunity cost is, who are the relevant stakeholders, bring in the subject matter experts. This helps give you better information that if WalkMe is gonna be the best use case to solve this issue or help guide behaviors in a wanted manner. And from there, you start to generate solutions, you know, and evaluate which one's gonna be the best one. Then once you evaluate, you pick one, implement the solution, and then you measure the progress. Maybe the walk me does well, maybe it doesn't do well, and you need to tweak it. This is being honest with the process. Any data you can gather, I always say is good data. That was a, a new process that we put in place to be a little bit more stringent about who we let in the door to be able to utilize walk me. Believe it or not, we started to turn away a lot more people um, because they couldn't quantify why they wanted it other than they really thought it was just a real cool technology. And lastly, I'll show you a couple examples of where we implemented WalkMe, where we were actually very successful. Uh, the first was a case of client standards and requirements. So the pain point is we work with a lot of clients, and some of those have established standards and requirements uh, for how we engage them, whether it's proposal delivery or delivering solutions. And our overall goal was to increase the sellers about certain standards so that we could eliminate out-of-scope proposal delivery. Now, that pain point was we don't want to damage that relationship with that client. And so the solution, solution we came up with was implementing a walk me standards that would show up on notifications for identified sales opportunities that had standards um, and requirements in place. And there was a certain specific account that had gotten some negative feedback because people were reaching out to them outside of that scope of delivery. 
Well, the outcome is once we put that walk in place, everyone that touched that certain opportunity or that client started to see that notification to know that there were standards and requirements in place. We even give them a link to where they could go see where those standards and requirements were. This was more of a, a qualitative feedback, but what we saw was the client was much happier with us. That relationship uh, really developed. We stopped hearing any complaints. Um, it started delivering how we were supposed to with it. So greatly that, that walk me helped us to avoid impacting a negative relationship with a, a very high potential client, which could have negatively impacted our business. So that was that risk that we identified and put a response in place for. The next one we utilized was very important as well is data protection and compliance. It's something that should be probably important to every company. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we would prohibit the exposure of protected data in violation of any standards of CUI. If you've never heard of it, it's controlled unclassified information. So this is information that needs to be handled in a certain way um, that has limited dissemination markings. But we wanted to train our employees because these are the people who are handling this data and handling this information. So we wanted to assist them with being able to readily identify Anything with CUI, controlled classified information, uh, with dissemination markings. And so our goal was that we actually implemented some uh, walk-me condition within Salesforce, which was a CRM that we use. Um, and we also put a link to a quick reference guide. So we were able to identify any government opportunities in our, in our seller CRM. And anything that had a government opportunity attached to it would actually get a walk-me population. It says, please be aware, this is a government opportunity that could be potential CUI. And gave them the quick reference link to that document where they could see what those limited dissemination markings are. And the best outcome was that we established, established a CUI identification process and a handling process. Um, and we've been doing very well with making sure that that data gets handled accordingly. Um, and data protection, I said, should be key of mind for every company, but something that also worked out very well for us. And our third example is driving to the organizational strategy. You know, we wanna make sure that we get an enhanced organizational sales strategy as companies change and pivot, well, how do we communicate that strategy consistently to touch the key sellers that are our client-facing people? We wanted to increase seller awareness about new prioritizations, about new initiatives that came out that the organizational strategy was in alignment with what they were doing and also helped increase the proposal pipeline for opportunities that they'd reach out to. So we actually started to implement a walk me guidance on targeted sales opportunities that were considered a priority by the organization. This is just for our internal sales support resources. But what we realized was a significant increase once that walking was deployed after nine months in the sales pipeline, not just in sales pipeline, which is our key objective, but we also saw a significant increase in the conversion rate for those targeted opportunities. That's something that helped us to align with the strategy of the organization and help guide those behaviors of those sellers by putting something consistently in front of them you know, every time they touch an opportunity to know that this is something that's a priority for the company to really help us grow our market share. So some key takeaways. Um, keep it simple. Governance. Governance is priority number one. You have to have structure in place. You have to have decision makers in place to decide, you know, are we going to utilize this tool to the best of our abilities? Is this the right tool to be able to use? Accountability for having documents. Accountability for building your, your, your information and, and tracking documents. You know, having control over the process is number one. Um, business case, build out your business case examples. Make sure that the strategy alignment is in alignment with your organization. You want to be able to measure that value, you know, that quantifiable value up front, understand whether it's working or not, and document whether you actually reached your established target. Now, this is going to help the, the, the attainment with WalkMe. Uh, when you can show that value with business cases with leadership. Third, follow that problem solving process, understanding your opportunity costs. So one of the first questions I ask anyone that reaches out to me and says, I think WalkMe would be a good solution for this problem. And I say, well, what's the opportunity cost? What's the cost of having inaction? You know, if we can quantify that, now we can start to put things together in KPIs for how we would like to measure success. You know, that helps you to make evidence-based decisions, you know, which is key within management. It's a little bit more heavy lifting and it's hard work, but you get much better outcomes with it. And lastly, keep priority design on the user experience. You know, pilot your initiatives with your targeted audience. You know, get their feedback. Make sure you're talking to the people that you're building this for so they know exactly you know, what they're seeing. Getting that feedback, I can't tell you how many walkers we thought, you know, they were the bee's knees. 
and then we piloted them out. We got a lot of great feedback to let us know we were running, you know, hunting up the wrong tree. So we had to change it, but we, we tweaked it and we listened to the target audience and made it better for them. So you want to make sure you're having a positive impact on the end user you know, and establish that value proposition for them. How are you making their lives better? So from a high-level perspective, these are kind of the key takeaways. Um, it's a great program. I love the technology, uh, but it really taught us a lot about being a lot more disciplined around our data, uh, around our strategy, um, and how to measure the impact that we were making. And that's all I have. Thank you. Antonio, <clears throat> excuse me, Antonio, thank you. Um, a lot of great comments in the chat, a lot of great takeaways. Um, just fantastic uh, information today, uh, which is why I'm excited to get to transition to the next part of our event today, which is the panel discussion. And uh, we've got Andrew Ackman here to moderate with us today. Andrew is a senior program architect here at WalkMe. This is his second time uh, moderating the panel here on the DAP Pro Show. So Andrew, welcome back. Thanks so much, Aaron. Uh, and thank you, Antonio and Alexa. What a great group we got here. Um, I'm jotting down some notes as well here. It's amazing content. Awesome. Uh, so the way this works, uh, Andrew is going to just uh, dive a little deeper onto uh, in, into everything that Antonio and Alexa have been sharing, ask some questions. But this is also a great time if you have questions that you would like to submit for the Q&A portion of the event, please use that Q&A button down there at the bottom of your screen on your Zoom tools. Um, but Andrew, I'll turn things over to you. Yeah, thanks so much, Aaron. Um, and again, thanks so much, Antonio and Alexa. Um, so much thought here goes into prioritizing and thinking about the projects. Uh, I love the conversation that we had that you shared with us, Antonio. A lot of these really great facts around how do you actually develop the impact of these processes and projects and making sure that the projects you're working have an impact. And Alexa, right, creating these models around things like cost of delay are a really interesting way to help people in our community think about the value of what Walk Me is putting to the table. Uh, so one of the things that comes up a lot is I think as people are going on this journey with Walk Me, what would you tell some of these folks to look out for that might let them know that they're ready to shift from, you know, putting out uh, Walk Me content all over the place because they want to make everyone helpful and kind of shift from Oprah mode um, to more of a strategic and data minded um program that they might be looking at? Um, what are some of those things they might want to look out for? And what are some signs? that they might be ready to go in this direction. Antonio, well, you want to start I'll, that off? Yeah, I'll, I'll touch on that first. So like technology, it's one of those things, right? Innovation, like you want to be that company that, that has that model. You know, you feel like you're, you're successful. And anytime you see something that you feel has great value, anytime you can get, you know, any kind of champions or peers that want to get on board with it, you know, you get even more excited. You're like, let's pull this person in and pull that person in. Um, but you got to temper that excitement to make sure that you can show that value because you have to be a steward of your business, right? And that's kind of priority number one. And the key lesson that I took away from it is that although you should have a strategy within your company, you know, for having a digital culture, you know, you should have a strategy of how you want to actually make an impact. Anytime you take on a new software tool, you need to have a strategy on how you're going to use that tool. How are you going to deploy that tool? You need to put rules around, you know, that tool. It, it shouldn't just be an open field, right? It, it's, it's a great tool, but you should have kind of a, a gated community to say, okay, you want to get in the gate, show me that there's, you know, actual data and statistics that this can make an impact, make the right use case. Because otherwise you're just going to flood the field, you know, with, with a lot of walking populate pop-ups. Uh, pop and that was the thing that really stood out to me um, you know, from, my, from my career coming up from the ground up, being in the field, being a client facing uh, individual at different levels. I started to think about those people logging in and then all of a sudden it's like, you got this walk me and that walk me, this walk me overload, right? And now it's like, they started to get disinterested in the process. So it's like, we really wanted to be very specific and strategic about how we use it, make sure that every walk me got a strong value proposition. And if we kept that to task, that means every new walk me that came out, we automatically had built in credibility. That's fantastic. I mean, I love the idea of having built-in credibility so that you're thinking about the customer's perspective. Uh, the people that are using this have to engage with the stuff you want to be adding value across every single point of view. Um, Alexa, what comes to mind for you? You know, what are some signs, you know, that people are ready to start shifting in this direction as well? 
Yeah, so one of the things that I was really, I, and I think the group was also really interested in was the Oprah model um, that Antonio mentioned, you get to walk me, you get to walk me. Um, that, that was great. And for me, um, this is very timely. Um, whenever we look back at our model uh, that I presented and, and thinking about cost of delay to CD3, CD3 is going to be the key to help you prioritize what do we work on? Which one of these is the most important? Um, which is going to have the highest cost of delay um, if we don't do this uh, particular Walk Me app or project? Um, and so being able to prioritize your requests and your projects and your apps with that CD3 score enterprise-wide um, is really a great resource. Um, that's where I'd like to live, in a place where everything has a nice score, everything's very well organized. And I, I recognize that not everyone is at that place. Um, and so getting there is again, part of our journey. Um, but we've got some really great tools and Antonio has shared some really awesome insights today. Thanks, Alexa. I agree with you hundred percent. I mean, it's 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 all part of the the journey of how we do that. Um, I one of the things that I think a lot of people run into as well is this this desire of just you know I think people that are in the walking community generally want to make other people happy. There's this kind of like desire to like I want to make your life better. I want to make your job better. I want to make the software better. And as we're working towards that, especially as we're prioritizing things and identifying where we should and maybe shouldn't be putting Lockby right now, part of that is actually saying no to folks, is saying, well, this sounds like a really great idea, but you know, maybe the cost of delivery score isn't high enough, or, or I'm sorry, the delay of uh, the delay of delivery here isn't high enough for us to really get started. Um, so how do we help? people know? Uh, how do you guys go about, you know, giving people the not so great news that this is a project that might not be ready to get started? Do you have any tips, <laughs> Alexa? Yeah, Alexa. Or, or yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that is a wonderful question. And I think that most people who are involved with Walk Me um, or are on this call um, probably can relate to having some kind of hero complex or hero syndrome. We want to be able to provide a solution and saying no isn't always the easiest thing when we um, wanna be able to help people and support them. Um, and for me personally, I don't say no without an alternative solution. I wanna bring ideas um, and it's, no, it's a no for walk me, but here's another option. Here's what we recommend. Here are some resources that may, you know, give you some inspiration on a different route. Um, and then how can we support you on, on that separate path? That's awesome, Alexa. How about you, Antonio? What do you run into? I, I really like that idea, Alexa, not telling them what you, what you can't do, but what they can do. Um, so you're also kind of pivoting, giving them a, a different you know, path to take. Um, anytime people reach out to us to, you know, our walk me group internally and kind of an interest in walk me, you know, we usually set up a, a meeting. So what I like to do is take some of those data, those business cases that we've already built out where we've got solid concrete data. Um, and we usually open those, those meeting engagements with those business cases so that first off the gate, it shows that, hey, this is the quantifiable data of why we put this other walk me in place. We were able to measure the problem, the impact, we were able to measure the risk. Um, of not doing something, we implemented it. This is the KPIs we were tracking. This is how we were able to tell if we were successful or not. Um, putting that first and foremost and asking questions seems to kind of answer the, the problem for us because now when you start asking more questions, okay, so what's the problem? It's like, well, I want my people to know this. Well, is this a consistent problem? Is it a training issue? So what have you seen as far as the negative impact? Um, well, I don't feel like they, they, they know what they're doing. Well, is it a feel or is it quantifiable? Is it impacting your business? It's really just asking questions. You know, and a lot of times as you start to ask those questions, especially after you've shown that, that business case with quantifiable data, they kind of come to the conclusion on their own that maybe this isn't the best use case for us. Um, but like I said, it can be hard. You do have to tell some people no, but just like Alexa, um, I think probably what really helps us out is we put together our governance board as well. Um, so even if, you know, I'm thinking to myself, 
I know this isn't the best use case for Walker, okay? But I'm gonna take your, take your issue, right? I'm not having to make the decision on my own. We've established a governance board of leaders. And so we take that and we present it to that governance board, you know, and they kind of, it's like the, you know, King Arthur's circle, right? They're round table. <laughs> they sit around and, and they talk about it at, at a high level perspective, whether, you know, this walking is going to be you know, the best case for us to do. And they, they make the call whether we're moving forward or not. Um, and because we have people from different segments of the business, um, we're always able to do like Alexa is where someone else would step up and say, well, my portion of the business for L&D or my portion in the business from being a, an analyst or, you know, CRM analyst, we can do A, B, or C instead of this. You know, so yes, we do come to them and say, okay, the governance board did deny the request, but I'm going to put you in place with this, or touch with this person in this segment of the business that says they, they actually have an answer for you. I love that, Antonio. Um, it's it's just kind of gets people thinking that there's so many different aspects of, of what we're all doing here as DAP professionals and DAP managers, um, especially that fact that we're planning, we're showcasing value, and even during the project, there's probably people trying to figure out well, what's going on, right? When is this thing going to go live and how far away are we around that? Uh, Alexa, you mentioned using Miro. I love that idea of like showcasing updates and ideas as things are happening, right? You're providing information and data to all your stakeholders around what's in process and what's going on. But I'm wondering, you know, in that period, if you ever run into this kind of desire from other teams to understand what's happening, um, how, what are some other ways um, that you've seen for folks to be successful during a project to show that value, especially even when projects can kind of go on for kind of a long period of time from time to time? Yeah, that's a, this is a great question. And there's so many opportunities. And if anyone knows um, or has heard Stephanie Z speak, she talks about sneaking into meetings. And I think that that's an awesome opportunity to share and show value by getting into places and, and speaking up about all of the great solutions that have been accomplished. Um, a, another way to show value uh, during a project with, with stakeholders or with potential uh, future stakeholders, um, it, newsletters, you know, we've, we've seen it. There's a presentation at Elevate that had some incredible options for newsletters. Um, doing that, um, you know, getting in front of projects and seeing where you can share your voice. Um, also, I think what's really interesting is that walk me in the admin center, you can go in and you can allow stakeholders um, uh, a, a specific access and where they can get in and they can review insights themselves. So uh, most of us walk me users, developers, builders, we've got um, admin access, your content creator access, builder access, analyst access, but there are ways to create uh, unique user roles and permissions to allow your stakeholders a specific access in to see just their insights data into their platform. And I think that's a really neat tool that is sometimes underutilized. And I think that uh, if they can get in and see it on their own, self-serve, uh, that's a great resource for them to have. Love that, Alexa. And quick shout out to Christy uh, from our session uh, a few weeks ago, where she talked about how she sends newsletters um, and templates and all that really great stuff. So uh, we'll have to get some of that collateral back up here for reference. Thanks for that, Alexa. Um, I want to jump into, so we got some questions coming in. You guys cool? If we hop into some Q&A, we intersperse this, we layer it in, let's do this. Um, I think we have some good questions here. I love this one a lot, um, which is how do you bring awareness to the walk me tools that you've already implemented? And I wonder if this is kind of going in conjunction with like, how do we tell that story and how do you point to prior value? Uh, but we've got someone here who uses, who does not use walk me internally, uh, they actually provide us a way to help their customers. They're trying to change user behavior, direct them to other resources rather than just calling the help desk. So making, it sounds to me like kind of an awareness question of when you're implementing something, how do you bring awareness to the tools that exist if people aren't using them? Um, is there data that perhaps you look at um, to let you know that things are working the way that you had intended and how to go back and maybe optimize some of that content? Well, the what two things we utilize is, is that first part where we talk about that problem solving is getting quantifiable data on what's currently happening in that, in that current state, right? Um, once we get that, we can create a baseline. 
And we utilize that baseline to be able to say, what's the, the delta between the baseline of the current state? And what are we seeing two months, three months, nine months in the future? That lets us know as well. Um, having access to the Walk Me Insights page also is a great use case because we can go and see how many times a walk me has been viewed, how many times it's been clicked and people have interacted with it. Um, so that really helps us out as far as letting us know how that walk is performing. Um, having the business case is, is a great staple for us because we try to make that business case as, as clear cut and as simple and concise as possible where anyone can read it um, and understand what that value is. And from that standpoint, Having that governance board of leaders in different segments of the business, anytime we launch a new walk meet, we actually have a um, Salesforce release meetings, or we'll have company wide meetings or have the ones for different segments of the business. So depending on who that walk is impacting, um, we're able to get on that agenda. You know, so we have kind of that all hands call, everyone comes together. And once we're in the agenda, we kind of announce this is the walk meet that's being put in place. We walk through what the value is, why we're putting it in place, how it's going to serve. So it's Having that governance board in our PMO office is, is really valuable to us because now whenever we make a walk me, we have a format to where we can touch a lot of individuals throughout the company, at least the target audience, and make them aware of like new walk me's that are, that are being released. That sounds awesome, Antonio. Um, thank you. Sounds like there's a lot of stakeholder coordination just to make sure that what it is that you're working on. Um, is actually designed to have its intended outcome. So whether it's an internal process or an external use case, you know, really gathering that information, working across the aisle to make sure that everyone's voice is kind of represented there um, helps ensure that you've got the right idea in mind. Yeah, and that, that might've been probably the most timely consuming part is, just, is creating the governance board to make sure we had someone relevant from different each segment. But once we got that board created, it made it much more seamless because every time, you know, we talk about a walk me that's going to impact a segment of the business, we've got someone on that call and leadership that says, oh, I own that portion. You know, I can reach out to so-and-so and this so-and-so, and this is going to affect them. So now that we've got an established governance board, that's really helped streamline the process and made the communication much more efficient. Um, Alexa, is that similar to how you guys operate? Do you have a, some sort of like cross-functional board that you guys discuss with to, to check on uh, your outcomes and make sure you're building the right things? So yes and no, uh, we're actually in the middle of forming that, and and it's really exciting because um, you know we 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 played around with different models in the past, and so we are right in the perfect time to um, learn from Antonio on the on the governance board. Um, now, when I look at this question from Janelle and looking in the Q and A, uh, that first question, how do you bring awareness to the tools that you've implemented, and then I understand that context behind it. Um, use walk me to introduce walk me. Um, that is, is one of the most impactful ways to get your tools um, showcased. Uh, one thing that we've done is really cool little videos, quick, you know, quick little bite-sized uh, videos that with shout outs, you know, we point to walk me. This is the new way that we're doing things, you know, come over to uh, this menu or use this shuttle or this launcher, whatever it is. And uh, that's been really successful. And it starts, uh, users start becoming normalized to seeing something on their screen, um, to using that walk me instead of just calling your help desk. Um, so using walk me to introduce walk me or even showcase and bring awareness to a walk me tool is key, I think there. I think that's a great opportunity for a Keanu meme using walk me <laughs> to introduce walk me. It's like, a, I'm having a whoa moment right now, but it's, it sounds great. I love that. That's such a great tip. Um, and I hope people take a walk away with that. Um, this is, I think like a really practical one, especially since we're talking about data and we're developing these business cases and all that great stuff. Um, how do you guys go about incorporating the cost and licensing hurdle of walk me? Um, not all organizations might have an ELA, right? Where WalkMe is available on all systems. And the cost of WalkMe may actually need to be considered as part of that planning process. Um, do you guys go in and, and calculate that with the teams? And, you know, do you guys budget for that internally? Um, how do you guys go about overcoming some of those um, costs and licensing and contract hurdles when trying to factor out some of these projects? Yeah. I'll, let, I'll let Alexa go. <laughs> yeah. This this one is going to be a little bit more tricky. It's going to be very dependent 
on your company and without getting into you know specifics on how we work um this one you're going to have to have the right leadership support um for your contracts and with walk me and being able to go in and, and again cost of delay um that template that i had presented i think is going to make a really compelling case that's the template that i worked through to move from a one app to an ELA and showing that cost of delay is really going to support um, moving forward and then being able to budget long-term. Um, coming back in at the end with any value realization or ROI um, will support you know, renewals and movement forward and, and continued relevance with WalkMe with having that app in, in your tech stack. Um, but this is really going to be dependent on your unique situation um, with your company. And I'm muted. Thanks, Alexa. What about you, Antonio? So I don't have quite as much as involvement for the, the licensing fees and the ELO, ELA, um, although we do have someone on our governance board that, that deals with that. Um, the two key things I look at working with the Walkman team um, and they've been fantastic to help us. And I want to do the same for them is that I look at information and influence. Um, so we want to make sure that A, we're showing that information for high value priority projects. You know, that's really understanding that quantifiable data and being able to show our ROI. If we can get a significant strength of ROI, like I touched on one of the examples, if we can see a 10 to 15% increase in pipeline, you know, if we can see a 6% increase in conversion rate percentage, well, that's hard coded data. You know, that's that's market growth in numbers. So that's that information piece. Um, through the governance board, we also look at when leadership has certain um, initiatives they want to push, and, you know, and we may prioritize some of those as well. So what happens is that information and influence, the great information about the ROI, we bring that to the table. And the influence is we're really prioritizing initiatives that the top executive leadership really want to drive. And so to me, that helps me to, to give my, my cohort the information that he needs to say, okay, Here's the quantifiable data of how walking has helped our market growth. Here's how it's protected us from, from any kind of data protection vulnerability. You know, and here are some of these key initiatives that executives have decided are key strategic things they want to drive. So when you put that in front of them, it's a much better use case you know, to justify a fee or a license fee um, when that executive or that leadership person knows, hey, we, you know, we recruit a certain amount of hundreds of millions of dollars or you know, a certain percentage of increased conversion rate. Um, or we've, you know, uh, alleviated any kind of concerns for vulnerability for data protections, you know, or we've kept a relationship with a certain client because everyone knows the standards and the cost of losing that client would be incredibly significant. So I just try to give as much information as I can um, with as much influence as I can to the correct people so they can have those costs as far as justifying those fees. I love that. And Tony, it sounds like it, it all goes back to this whole idea of data. It's like the more data that you have and the more the better the business case, these the easier it is to kind of get over some of these, you know, whether we like it or not, they're kind of like bureaucratic hurdles, right? Like we've got to get things approved. We've got to get some processes in place. Sometimes we need contracts to get signed. And the more data, the more value that we have at our disposal when working across each of these different projects, the easier it is to make those cases, um, which goes back to, you know, why it's so important to focus on those high value projects and also work cross-functionally to coach the people that you work with into how to make a better business case and how to provide all that information so that the walk content you're building is built for value and has the data to support it. Um, as we're running into the last few minutes of this, I think it's always a fun question or maybe terrifying. Um, I've heard this before uh, on a podcast I like to listen to and I like, wanted to bring it here, which is everyone loves the idea of a time machine. And if you can go into the time machine and visit yourself back when you were first starting to use WalkMe, maybe it's your first kickoff call or the first time you realize that you're working with it, um, what is one tip or one word of advice um, or maybe just a hug that you would give yourself um, if you can go back in time and then spend five minutes with yourself? Um, Alexa, you want to kick off with that one? Yeah, um, lots of things I would tell myself. Uh, the first one and probably um, the only one that I'm going to share is really uh, to stay persistent. Um, people who don't use Walk Me or are not in this type of space um, don't always understand it the way that 
those who are passionate about Walk Me understand it. Um, and that's okay. Um, however, it, it can really be hard at the beginning trying to share the great things that and solutions that can be provided um, if there are groups of people or even just one individual who, um, you know, might not necessarily understand or believe to the extent that you do. Um, and I would just say, be persistent, um, persistent and consistent uh, with, with, with modeling and showing uh, solutions and people will start to see, see the light uh, of this. And uh, I, I think that's the key for, for me, at least going back, yeah. Antonio, what are you, uh, what are you doing with your time machine? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to close down the Oprah Winfrey show if I have time machine, right? <laughs> I'm going to be 10 times more, you know, very selective about the initiatives, you know, that I want to have all walk in. Because if I could go back and, and pick some of the different ones and just really focus on the key ones that showed a strong RI out the gate, um, you know, to make it a little bit more exclusive. So those first two or three projects really kind of jumped out um, and had a significant impact kind of help create a little bit more, you know, club exclusivity, right? It's like not everybody can get into the, the walking club. You, you've really got to bring your data and your insights and really got to show your risk, um, you know, and the opportunity cost has to be significant, you know, for you to get into the walking club. And the more we do that, the more that everybody now wants to get into it, right? Thanks, Antonio. And I think with that, I'm going to throw it back to Aaron with one minute left. I want to thank Antonio and Alexa. This has been such a great discussion and Aaron and Lexi for having me. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. A um, couple things as we close. One, if you enjoyed the event today, please let us know. I just popped a poll up on the screen and your feedback does help us to make sure that future events are uh, what you need them to be. Uh, secondly, speaking of future events, uh, we have more on the way. Uh, December 15th, we're kicking off a two-part series on goals in our Walk Me webinar series, and Andrew is going to be back to help co-host that event. Uh, for part one, we're discussing tracked events and funnels to facilitate desired user behaviors to help you achieve your goals, and we're going to follow that up in January by talking about analytics. Uh, so be sure to register for that. Uh, the Watch Me Build series closes out the year on December 15th as well, so it's a double header that day uh, with a session on content troubleshooting and as far as those January events, we've got several of them up in the community already that you can take a look at and get set by saving your seat for next year. Uh, we do have user groups happening as well, including one meetup immediately following this event. If you're looking for more information on strategy and DAP tactics or DAPTICS, as we're calling it. Uh, so lots of events going on in the community, lots of resources for you uh, that we hope will be super helpful. Um, I will share the link in the chat to the community events page if you'd like to take a look at those or any events. Um, and we hope to see you back at the DAP Pro Show or elsewhere soon. Um, otherwise, thank you again to Andrew, to Alexa, to Antonio, and to all of you for being here today. Um, as you leave, you'll have an opportunity to share any additional feedback if you'd like. But either way, we hope to see you at the next event. Thanks very much and have a great one.